been praying for my loss of my hearing aid, which I appreciate. I found it. So thank, thank you for your prayers, and uh, God has been kind and merciful. Amen. All right, as you can see, we're going to have communion following this service. Uh, so I uh, hope that you'll be able to stay for that, especially if you're a member here. If you're a member here, you really need to stay uh, for that, if at all possible. Amen. All right, uh, we're going to take our Bible and go to Matthew. And when you get Matthew, we'll look at ver or chapter 13. And you get Matthew 13, we'll get verse number 1. <clears throat> And we'll have a word of prayer before we start, so let's bow our heads for that. Lord God, we do bow before thee this morning and ask you to please bless with your presence. I pray, God, that you would help the ears of your people uh, to be attentive toward the truth that we find in God's holy word. And I pray, God, that you would fill me with thy spirit and help me to be an able-bodied minister to the household of faith this morning. Uh, please bless me with wisdom and liberty, I, I pray, and I ask this in Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 All right, uh, I call the message, um, uh, Is There Something Else That Matters? Kind of a weird title. Is there something else that matters? And of course the answer is no. The main thing is the main thing. And that is uh, guidance from God's word. And the Lord Jesus is going to uh, leave a house. He was in a house, and he had healed a guy in that house. And the Bible said uh, when he was in that house that the house was full. I don't know how big of a house it was, but it was full. In so much that mom and, dad, or mom and brother and sisters couldn't even come in and see him and talk with him because... The house was so full, they couldn't even come in and talk to him. And uh, they tried, and they sent a messenger, go up and tell him that, that your mom and your brothers are here. And he said, these who sit at my feet and hear the word of God, these are my mothers and brothers. And he told them to wait outside. I, I want to get this word of God to these people, and that's most important to me. And so as we get ready to read the next phase here, he leaves the house, and he goes, and he's and he, finds a seat by the shore of Galilee, and I don't know if he just kind of sits cross-legged on the grass out there or what he does. Somebody brought him a folding chair. I don't know. Probably not the folding chair. He, he probably just had a little, maybe a little blanket or something. He just sat down by the sea, and as he sat there, multitudes of people began to gather. And he thought, wow, what an opportune time to do a little preaching. And so he, does, he takes advantage of that. Uh, take your Bible and go to Matthew 13 and verse number 1. The Bible says, the same day went Jesus out of the house, that's in the previous chapter, and sat by the seaside. And great, notice the word great, and then notice multitudes, plural. So there's a lot of people gathering there. I don't know how many, I would venture to say several hundred probably safe. It says they're great multitudes. It's looking like a pretty good crowd, wouldn't you think? I mean, what he did in the house really caught fire. I mean, people heard it, and they were gathering. They, they wanted, and the people that were in the house wanted more. You know, that, that didn't suffice them. They, they wanted more. They wanted to hear more of what he had to say. This was Jesus Christ. This was the name of their, of their day, boy. I mean, it, and it's still the name, but uh, uh, they, were, and they gathered there in verse 2. And it says, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. So if you could picture that, if you will. He gets up. He was sitting by the shore, and he gets up, and he, and he, and he sees a, 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 a boat anchored there tied to the shore, and he gets on the ship and probably goes to the bow, a nice little pulpit. He's up nice and high. People are looking up at him, you know, and he's there. And, uh, 
And you can imagine all the vast people out there, and he's looking at a pretty good crowd. And if you were a bystander, you'd look back, and you'd see him standing there, and you'd look and see all the people. And you could almost imagine, you know, <laughs> you almost. but he's not on the water. He's, he's, he's looking at the land. You know, it's backwards. <laughs> and uh, he told them, uh, come follow me, and I'll teach you to be fishers of men. And, and they were used to fishing in the ocean, but he turns it around. He's going to fish for people. He wants to... Uh, catch people uh, for the kingdom of God. And so you get this picture of, the, of, of him, and, and it says there um, uh, that he sits by the sea. Now all these people gather together, and he sees the happening. He decides to uh, take advantage of the situation, and, uh, and so he, and he goes on that boat, and he positions himself where everybody can see well and hopefully be able to hear him well. Uh, and I'm sure... Well, I'm not real sure, but I'm thinking in that day, there were probably no sirens going on or cars running around or planes flying overhead. I would think your voice could carry pretty good out there in the wilderness. I suppose that as deep as that crowd was and as loud as his voice could be, that he, he was probably doing a pretty good job reaching all the ears there. And I knew that was important for him. And uh, so um, and all these people had come and gather to hear him. Some of them had come from the house. Others in the area heard what he did in the house, and they wanted to get in on it. And so somebody said, he went over by the Sea of Galilee, and they thought, well, let's go. And they went over there. It's almost like you hear Elvis is in the building, and everybody wants to go see, you know, something that people like. And I, that's a, 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 not a comparison at all. It's just to show how people are drawn to fame and uh, people that they admire and and he was admired by folks, and they had gathered by the hundreds there. And, uh, and so he, and, he, and he got on that boat to preach at them. And uh, so it showed me that these people uh, heard, what he heard what he had to say or heard what he had done to others, and they wanted more. Uh, they weren't satisfied with one little meeting in the house. They wanted more. And I, and I like that you're here today. You, you're not satisfied with last week. You're not even satisfied with last Wednesday. You, you want more. And I understand that. We're, we're, we're reading the Bible here today. These are the words of God. And, and yeah, they are, they are of utmost importance. They ought to be way up on the priority list. And so we have gathered, kind of like those people have gathered. And, and he's on that boat, and he's, and he's going to preach to them. And it shows me that there was a lot of people in that region that really were interested in what he had to say. Uh, I wish there were that many people that feel that way today. Uh, I know there are other churches. We're not the only one. And I know this is Sunday, and there's people all over town and all over our nation that have gathered uh, to hear the Word of God. And, and I understand why. They are precious words there's nothing like it in anywhere in the world. Uh, this is the best book. This is the best instruction. He has the best spirit, and he has the best reward. And so it's understandable that all of us would gather. But he looks out across the, the crowd, and I'm sure he's very glad that, that they are there. Don't when you think that? I, I think he's not bothered by the crowd. I think he's happy about it. I think he's thinking, you know, I got, I got a lot of people that I can affect today. I got a lot of people that I can instruct today and help them to see how to be prepared for the kingdom I've got prepared for them. And so he begins to preach to them. And he wants them to follow all of his words that he says. He's real concerned that this brief moment that he has with them is going to count as best as it could. Amen? I mean, he's only going to preach in a little while, maybe a couple hours or so. Not like here, 45 minutes all you can handle and you're you know, starting to fall asleep or getting hungry or something, you know. Not understand all that stuff. And they did too. I mean, I remember one time he said uh, they perish with hunger. They've been out here so long and uh, they give them something to eat. And they said, well, we don't have no food. He said, well, this little boy's got some fish and bread. Go give it to them. They said, they ain't going to feed but a couple people. And he said, just do what I tell you. It'll be worth it. He ends up feeding them all with that lunch, you know. Amazing. Uh, so anyway, he's, he got this, and we're trying to picture the scene as it looks like uh, he's getting ready to, to preach to these people. And we're going to get to verse 3, and as we go, we're going to find out what, he's, what he has on his heart for the people. 
And what he has on his heart is a picture of a man planting seeds. Uh, the way he put it was a sower went forth to sow. And I think Abe brought it up, I think, Wednesday night. And he's got this bag strapped around his neck, and he's got this pouch, and it's full of seed. And, he, and he's a sower, and the ground's all plowed up, you know. And part of that ground, people have walked on. There's a pathway, a couple areas on that on the side, there's a couple places where people have walked in the dirt that packed down real hard and tight. And this guy, he goes out and he dips his hand in that bag of seed. You got a whole handful of seed, and you got to get the you got to get the technique. And you let some of it go through your fingers, and you whip it like that. And as you do, it spreads out real nice. You don't just take a handful and throw it. You you let it scatter. It's almost like throwing a net. You got a lead with one edge, and as that edge pulls the rest of the net behind it, and it makes a big circle and fall. If you just throw it out there, you can catch nothing. So he gets the, he gets this seed, and he dips it in there, and he gets his fingers just right, and he goes whew, like that, and he walks a little bit further, and whew, whew, like that. He's just he's slinging this, he's slinging this. Uh, he said a sower went forth to sow, and he's throwing these seeds out there, and as the seeds fall, some of it goes on the hard path where people walk, and some of it finds little areas and crevices and goes down in there, and some of it finds weeds and stones. And we're going to read all about it. And what he's trying to do is trying to say, I got you people right now, and if you're not careful, you're going to miss what I'm saying. You're going to miss what I'm saying. There's going to be distractions in the crowd. There's going to be other things that come to play into you listening to what I got to say. And I'm hoping that you'll get my message and do everything you can to learn how to focus on what I got to say. And so that's what the parable is about. This is a parable. And so he likens the sower to himself. And the sower, the, the sower is going to throw the seed. And the seed is going to be a picture of the word of God. And the sower's going to be a picture of Jesus Christ. And then the thing I want you to really get is the ground. We're going to read about the ground where the seed falls on the ground, and that's your heart. So Jesus comes, and he throws the seed, and then it hits your heart. And that's where it's going to have possibility to do something. And so he's going to say how to make them productive. Amen. And so that's what's going to follow. So now that you're ready for that, let's look at verse 3. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. And so now he says, as the sower throws the seed, it hits the pathway that is well trodden. The dirt is very hard and packed, and the seed just bounces along the ground there. And it doesn't get down in. It's in the open, and the birds see it. And I used to have birds, so I know how that works. You throw that seed out there, boy, they are on it right now. They're fighting each other to get it. And, uh, so, and the birds come, and they grab that seed, and they fly off with it. So the ground gets picked real clean. Now, is there any way for a product or some fruit to come out of the wayside? No. No, because it's too hard. It did, the, the seed did not get in. Uh, take your Bible and go to verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When one heareth the word of the kingdom, that's the seed, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Notice that it was in his heart. This is the this is he which receives seed by the wayside. So the guy gets it, he hears it, but it never has a chance to get in. Something happens to take it away before it ever gets down. And he said, this is the one that's on the wayside. I call this the wayside heart. So we're going to look to see if you have a wayside heart. Did it get in? Did it not get in it? Uh, he looks at the crowd that is gathered to hear him, and he speaks to some of them. He speaks to them, and, uh, and uh, some of them are like this. They're, they're going, you know, you're too close to me. Move over. You know, it's a big crowd, right? It's a big crowd, and they're all in there. And uh, one guy, he's over here, and he's going, whoa, whoa, and Jesus is preaching. And he's going, and the guy, he's bothering, and he ain't getting nothing that Jesus is saying. And he's not getting anything Jesus is saying because you ever see people be distractive in the church? 
Sometimes they'll do that. Move over. Or some of them are doing, making, making you know, sometimes she'll get a little fan going, you know, and I'm going, what's that over there? And when she does that, I, I'm going, I, uh, what was he saying? I don't know what he was saying. <laughs> Amen? Uh, uh, some people get up right in the middle of the service to go to the bathroom. And, he, and he's, he, he's got a Baptist church going. It's no different. It's no different. Uh, some of them have to go to the bathroom, and they get up and go to the bathroom, and, uh, you know, half the people are going, and, he, and he's, trying to, he's trying to get their attention, trying to tell him about the kingdom, how to be prepared for the kingdom, and they're getting distracted. And when they get distracted like that, the seed can't get in, never has a chance. It, it's almost like the word went out, and they got it, they heard it, but it never got in because other things were, were ne- never let it get in, and they got distracted like that. And that, that's why I tell everybody, I, I know Alfred, he likes to get up in the middle, you know, in the middle of service and go, I said, brother, Try not to do that. I'm trying to make fun of him. Just use him as, a, as, as an illustration. And he doesn't mind. He, he can take it. And I said, brother, when you get up in the middle of the service, everybody, you, you're distracting what's going on in the service. Try not to get up so much. He said, I said, sit in the back. He said, well, I can't. And he told me why. And he said, I'll, I'll try to do better. I said, all right. And he's done real good. I, he, I don't think I've seen him get up since. That's a blessing. Amen. And, uh, all, you know, all distractions that go on in church, and uh, you, can't, you can't let the, the word doesn't get in. You miss, you miss some. And uh, so it's like someone that is uh, uh, by the wayside heart. And uh, it causes uh, uh, people not to be able to hear what God's trying to tell them. And it sees others that have to do something else. And uh, those distractions come out. And those distractions, in one place he said, uh, the birds come and take the seed that's on the wayside. And he said, uh, it's Satan. It's Satan. So Satan is the guy that caused you to have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Satan's the guy that caused you to feel like, I'm uncomfortable. Move over. You, you, you're too worried about yourself, and then and another's trying to hear the word of God. And he says, that's the devil trying to get in there and mess that thing up. Amen. I know, I know some of you try to witness, and when you witness, right when they get ready to bow the head or get ready to make a decision, the phone rings. Or the baby starts crying. Just a minute, i got to go tend the baby. That ain't the baby. That's the, that's the devil. The devil's over there pinching that baby. <laughs> Twisting it, you know. That baby, Rah! oh, right when he's getting ready to pay, that baby. Brother Jack, you, you do it all. He, he's been in ministry for years. He's seen this stuff go on way more than any of us has ever seen. But he could tell you some stories, I'm sure. But there's a devil that don't want the word of God going out and don't want people to hear what God had to say, that's for sure. And he'll cause distractions, and, and that'll be what, it got, what, what he called a wayside heart. And the wayside heart lets distractions distract them because they, uh, they're easily distracted because they're not focused. Now, the word has to be important enough to want to focus on it completely and don't let the distractions get you. So if somebody is distracting don't let you be caught by it. You stay focused. Amen. If not, you got a wayside heart. And the seed's not going to find its way in. The wayside heart is so full of itself, it cannot reason uh, that it is in need. And Jesus has the help, and they always have a reason. Uh, why does this not apply to me? Yeah, some people have a wayside heart. They think, well, okay, that's good for them. It's you know, that doesn't apply. I had, I, had, I had people in my church that I know something going on in their life because they've told me, and I find a verse or I find some help, and I think this will be a blessing to them, and I'll wing it on out there for everybody to get, and i say, hey, and they'll come up to me afterwards and say, well, thank you for that, brother. That's, that's kind of some of the things I've been going through. I said, well, brother, that, that, the Bible gave you exactly what to do. He said, that don't apply to me. It don't apply to you. Apply to everybody. What do you do? It don't apply to you. Apply to everybody. <laughs> but I, I said, you know, you say, what do you say about it? I say, you got a wayward heart. You got a wayside heart. Uh, without proper nourishment, you will shrivel up and not produce. Amen. So it's important that you get nourished from the Word of God. I remember uh, I used to have pigeons. I've told you all about that. I got when I was a little boy. I had those pigeons. And I get little nesting box. I build little nesting boxes for them. And pigeons are something, boy. They're they're real truthful and faithful to their mate. They got all the other birds in there, but they once they mate, that's it. They stay with that no matter what. They don't they don't go luring around to somebody. Or they stay right there. And uh, one thing about pigeons, I noticed this: they always have 
will almost always, few exceptions, but always have two eggs. When her time comes, she'll lay two eggs, and they'll both hatch at about the same time, maybe a day apart at the very most. One of them will usually be a little stronger than the other one. I don't know why that is, but usually it'll be a little stronger than the other. If that weaker one doesn't, isn't strong enough to fight that stronger one, he's going to continue to weaken. I've seen it, I've seen it dozens of times. That, that fat one, Brother Doc, he'll get in there, and Mom will come in there with a craw full of seed, and uh, she'll open her mouth, and he'll stick his beak in there, and she'll start throwing up, you know, she'll start gurgitating or whatever you call that, into his beak. And that little one, that little weak one, he's trying to get in there, but that big old guy, that fat bird, he's he taking all the stuff. He's taking all the stuff. And every single day, the weak one gets weaker and weaker, and the strong one gets stronger and stronger, and pretty soon the little one dies. That's a fact. I've watched it happen dozens of times. You got to go in there and you got to take that fat rascal out of there. Yeah, you, come feeding time, you take him out and you go set him somewhere where he's comfortable and then you let that little one get fed a little bit. And then when you see that he's, he's eating some, you put him back in. He's going to make sure he gets fed. You don't worry about him. He's okay. Yeah, he'll take everything he can get. Uh, I, I would to God be some Christians like that. But the ones that are not paying attention and the ones that are letting distraction get them, oh, they just get weaker and weaker. And they're never going to be productive because the Word of God never gets in, never gets anywhere. And they don't grow. They don't grow spiritually. I've seen a lot of Christians never grow spiritually. And I don't know why that is. I often wonder why that is sometimes. Now, what's the matter with them? Don't they read the same book I got? And I start to think, why? They get distracted real easy. And it never gets in. They got some reason, that's some little thing in there. They say, well, yeah, that's just a preacher's opinion. Well, that's what God said, or, or somebody distracted or whatever, and they got some reason why. They got some excuse as to why the Word of God doesn't apply to them, and so it never gets in there. And, you know, I call that, I call that the wayward or the wayside heart, the wayside heart. That's where the seed gets on, on, the, on the ground that's hard. And then we're going to look at verse 5, if you will, verse 5. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, this is what he, he's telling them from the boat. And he says, and he's yelling it. And, and forthwith, uh, they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. He's yelling this out to them. And he says in verse 6, and when the sun was up, uh, they were scorched. And because they had no root, uh, they withered away. And they're all listening to that stuff. And they're thinking, what's he trying to say? What does he mean? Stony ground and wayside. And, and they're trying to figure it out. And he's given them a parable, and he wants them to get it. Amen. And uh, the problem here are the stones, right? The stones are the problem. They're too hard, and they're, and they're in the dirt, and the seed goes out on the dirt, but it lands on top of a stone, and it can't get any deeper because the stone's harder than the seed. Seed's got no chance to get through the stone. It ain't going to happen. So it sits on just a half inch of dirt, maybe, and the sun and the water comes and it goes, cool, I'm starting to grow. But the roots don't, it, the roots can't go in because of the dumb stones in the way. And so it just, it just stays anemic. It's a little weak little Christian. And, 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 and then when, uh, uh, when it's time to be fruitful, it, it, can't, it can't give any fruit. And the seed can't uh, get into the ground well enough. And the, the stone is a barrier. It's in the way. And the stone uh, in the Bible, we'll see it in a minute, is a lack of character. He's not able to fight through the difficulties. That stone has become a difficulty. That's the problem, it's the stone. And so when we read the, his interpretation of that stone, uh, you'll find that it's the guy's inability to fight through the hardships. When hardships come, he goes, ah, this Christian stuff, I, I, I can't do it no more. It, it, it's too, it's not worth it. I, I, I'll just go back. That's, that's the... The, uh, I call that the, the stony heart. You got the wayside heart, and you got the stony heart. And the stony heart is the guy that doesn't have the character to weather the problems that come up with being a Christian. And we'll read it in a minute. I'm just going to lay the foundation for it. There, there are times you come in here, and some of the people in here, some of the Christians be ugly to you. And you know what you, some of you will do? That's it. I don't like that church. Well, the church is just fine. It was just that guy was ugly to you. The church is good. It's got the right book. The pastor's handsome. Uh, I'm being stupid. Uh, somebody said something. Somebody did something. 
And sometimes they will. I mean, church is full of all kinds of weirdos. You know, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. We've got all got little peculiarities about us, you know, and we wonder why everybody ain't just like us, you know, and ain't nobody is. We're all different. I mean, look at Doc. I mean, come on. <laughs> and, and, uh, but somebody says something or does something, and, uh, well, that's it for me. I'm out. I'm out. And they go down, look for another church to find a fault with that one, too. Or, or maybe, maybe they try to serve the Lord and somebody give them a rough time. I, I remember one time a lady come out and cussed us out big time. I mean, we were trying to give her the gospel. She was up there in the rich houses, you know, and go up there and knock on her door. Hi, we're from the church. Get out of here. Get off my bed. She came out on this porch. I said, whoa. <laughs> it looked like it. Then if there would have been a broom in, 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 within her reach, I'd have got swatted, you know. Is that the, me and Brother Mike, we, we stood back a little bit, and she came out on the side while we were walking. She said, leave. And I said, oh, we're, we're going. If you don't want it, that's, that's fine. You know, it's free country. So, so we're walking out, and she's coming out after us. She said, you guys are such pain in the, you know, and just, I mean, she was cussing and reading us in the right eye. And you know what the brother said afterwards? He said, I ain't going out no more. I said, oh, come on, Brother Mike. That's just one woman. How about all the tracks? We were successful getting them in the house. He said, yeah, but I, I don't, I, I got other things I could do without being cussed at like that. You know what? He never went back out. That was it. You know what I call that guy? I call that guy, what, what kind of heart was it? Hey, you're listening. Hey, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As a, as a stony heart Christian, that's what he had. He just let every little thing bother. And sometimes it's not a little thing. Sometimes it's a, sometimes it's a big deal. I remember, I remember one time, I, I remember one time uh, over in the valley, we were in the valley, and uh, this Jewish guy got saved. And uh, his father's name was Abraham. I'm telling you the truth. His father's name was Abraham. And Abraham was a staunch in it. Jew, full, full-fledged full Jew, and practicing, I mean, not just by name, but practicing, and when this guy got saved, you might remember that guy, I don't know if you remember, you were just little then, but but this guy, I, he, I said, uh, I'm going to come over there and witness to your dad, he goes, please do not, please do not, I'm already on thin ice with my dad, I says, really, what's going, and then he poured his heart, he almost choking back the tears. And I tell you, it was tough for him to be a Christian in that household. It was tough, brother. But he weathered it. He did okay. He wasn't really a stony heart Christian. I'm using him as an example because there are some people that take that as a reason for, I I'm not going to put up with that no more. I'm not going to do that. Sometimes somebody will be rough on you. It might be your family. It might be a neighbor. It might be somebody in the church. They should give you a rough time. And the Bible, we'll read it in a minute, it talks about when when tribulation or persecution comes, he is offended by and by, something like that, that he's offended. And he's like the stony heart. So in other words, those stones represent his ability to stay with it in spite of the stone. And he can't, he can't, he can't weather it. Uh, let's read a little further so we can see what it says there. Um, verse um, Oh, oh let's, let's look at uh, verse 20. Uh, but he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and with Anon with joy, and Anon with joy receiveth it. Yet he hath not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. So hardships come and circumstances trouble you because you're a Christian. Sometimes you could, I've even heard people lose their job over being a Christian because they got saved and boss heard them witnessing or something, fired them over. I've heard stuff like that. And some people say, well, I, I, you know, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm done. I, I can't take it. And, they, and, they, and they, can't, they can't bear fruit because uh, they're offended. They don't want to get involved. They don't want to serve the Lord because there's always consequences involved when you serve the Lord. Some would reason it's just not worth the trouble. And God would never allow anything that would, uh, uh, to come along that would be wrong or, or something that would hurt me in my life because I'm not worthy of any kind of trouble. Well, you are worth plenty of trouble. And if you weren't saved, uh, you know, I mean, if you went to hell, you deserve it. And I deserve, I deserve all the bad that came with all my sin. 
but God's been merciful to me, and God's been kind to me, and he's let that go. Should I not, uh, should I not get a little, what Job said, he said, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the words now. Should I, should I not receive evil also? Uh, something good have I got from his hand? Should I not receive evil also? Well, the answer, yeah, yeah. You should. There should be a, a couple little <laughs> bummers in life. Life doesn't go along perfect all the time. If it, if it did, you'd be spoiled so rotten, you wouldn't be good for anything. Yeah. Take your Bible and go to Acts 13. We've got to go quickly because I want to have a communion service. It won't take long, but I want to get through this Stony Heart one. And uh, it's found in Acts chapter 13, verse 5. And it says this, And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the isles unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. So Sergius Paulus was all over it, man. He's going, I like this. I want more. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so uh, is his name by interpretation, that'd be El uh, Solomus, uh, withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Now, what do you care if the deputy gets saved? What do you care if the deputy hears the word of God. And, but evidently, these sorcerer people, they just don't like anything about God. And so he got in the way and tried to stop it. And Paul, he saw that this, this guy is going to deter the deputy from getting the, the truth. And he's going to cause this deputy to go away from the faith. And uh, so it was a real issue with him. And and so, uh, verse 9, then Saul, who was called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all sub subtly and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. Boy, I'm, glad, I'm glad I wasn't around and withstood him, boy. Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Oh, uh, oh deputy is watching. Oh, Serge, Paul is watching that. And he's going, I want to hear the word of God. And, and this source is coming, ah, oh, you don't need to hear that stuff. Those guys are a bunch of liars. You don't get to trust them. Oh, they're looking for And he's going, oh, really? And Paul's coming to him, man, you better shut up. Man, I'm trying to give them the truth, and you're getting in the way. Oh, you, what do you say? Oh. Uh, uh, all kinds of bad things. <laughs> he, he, and then he, and he cursed him and he let blindness come upon him. And Sergius Paulus is going, whoa, he's feeling around. He can't see. Whoa, man, that's a sorcerer too. He's supposed to have some kind of spiritual power. And he's blind and because of what Paul said. He said, man, I ain't listening to that guy no more. So Sergius Paulus, he, 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 he got fixed up. Uh, verse uh, 12, and uh, then, then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed. Yeah, amen. Being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. So, so he got through it, but, but shows there that this guy was trying to stop it. And that happens to some of you guys. Every once in a while, will be somebody trying to pervert what you do. Or, oh, you guys are going too far with this. And you make too much. Out of, I don't know what all this stuff is. And if you have a stony heart, you're going to let that stuff affect you. And it's going to make sense. You know, it's going to make sense to you. And it's, and, and it's, and it's bogus. Is that what we say? That means it's, it's false. I, I've had people say to me, uh, so uh, you going to go with it? I said, no, I got church tonight. He said, I thought you went to church this morning. I said, I, do go, I did go to church this morning. And you going again tonight? I said, well, they're having church tonight. Yeah, I want to go to it. Well, man, is it? I mean, come on. How much church do you got? To, you ever have somebody? Come on. I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. And, then, and I said, well, stick around, man. It gets worse than that. I go Wednesday, too. They say, you go Wednesday, too? I say, yeah, I go three. You know, I try to help them see that some people lo love God's word enough to want to want to get on it. And you know what they'll say? They say, well, come on, man. Enough's enough. I mean, I always just feel I do my, I pay my dues. That's how they look at Christianity. I pay my dues. I go, I go to the Sunday morning service. That's good. All right. You know what I call you? I call you a stony heart Christian. You got, you got something in the way. Something in the way it won't let, won't let you grow like you should grow. You should grow. You should be productive. That's why we're throwing seeds out so that you bear fruit and be productive. All right, the last one is a choked heart. And I always, uh, who was that? I'm trying to think of that cartoon now. I can see that duck 
You know, so, somebody had that duck and was going like that, and his tongue was, ah, I'd be choking him, you know, and that duck, his tongue was hanging out, and slobber going everywhere. And the, the choked heart, verse 7, Matthew 13 and verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. And uh, my dad was always, uh, he was great at abusing his children, uh, <laughs> mainly me. Uh, and by, by making me pull weeds, he would always, if I got in any kind of trouble, and it was pretty often, it was usually every day or every other day I'd do something stupid, you know, and he'd say, all right, uh, punishment, you go out in the back and pull some weeds. He'd walk me out there and say, I want all the weeds out of here, and, uh, and I am a professional weed puller. <laughs> and I'll tell you how to do it. Before you get started, you hose it down. You hose it down, then you come back the next day, and that grass not all muddy and wet, you know, like if you, if you start weeding right now, you're going to get really dirty. So you wait the next day. So all the, the water soaks in there real good, everything's loosened up, and it's just kind of tight now. It's not real muddy. And you grab that weed, and even then, it's got, it's got a lot of little roots, and they're going everywhere. And you can pull those things out, and you got your little sack there, and you throw those weeds in there. And you just work on one, and you start going through like that. And you know, I'm a professional weed puller. And my dad would say, those weeds got to go because I got this beautiful plant. Sometimes it's a flower. He wasn't much on gardening. He wasn't much on planting fruit or anything. It was always some flower. My dad loves, to this day, loves, you know that. He loves flowers, any kind of flower, tulips, gladiolas. Uh, he's taught me some of them, you know. But they wouldn't do well with those weeds. But when I pulled them, Man, the next day, the next couple of days, they're, they're looking healthy and vibrant. So it does work. The weeds do choke because what happens is the weeds are getting in there where their roots are and disturbing any chance of their roots getting what, what should come uh, from the food or from the nourishment. And so uh, he likens that to a, a, a heart that is choked. And uh, notice the interpretation here in verse 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world. Notice the word care. That shows a fondness. Amen. That means I like it. Amen. Uh, uh, care of this world and the deceitfulness of money or riches. Choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Uh, so it comes from money. And uh, anything of the world that you might uh, put over the word of God. Amen. And, and if you find that you are saying, I don't have time to read my Bible because I want to go hunting, then the hunting has become more important to you than the word of God. For me, it's motorcycles. I can't put the motorcycle in front of my, in front of my Christianity. It, it has to have its place. I like it, but I can't let it run me. I can't let it dominate my life. Or I wouldn't be here this morning. It's a beautiful day. I'd be riding. Amen. Me and Jake and Abe and a couple other you and Jack, a couple other you around. And then we go, we go ride somewhere. But we're here because it, 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 that, that's just a, a thing. That's just a like that we have. But it should never be in competition with the most important thing in my life. The most important thing in my life is Jesus on that boat with his hands like this saying, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Prepare for the kingdom that's coming, and here's how to do it. And he would instruct the people, and I don't miss any of it. And if those Jews were attentive to what he had to say and got through all the persecuting things and all the distractions that come, if they weed through all that stuff, they wouldn't have stood there at the end of it and said, crucify him, crucify him. It wouldn't have happened, but it did happen. And it happened because uh, uh, they were hard-hearted, and they had, this, uh, they had this weedy heart. Amen. And God said, uh, it is a weed, and it has the ability to choke. It doesn't have the ability to kill so much, but it does choke. And it chokes the word, is the way he put it. And these days, I suppose the biggest weed in your life is probably your, your iPhone or your iPad or your cell phone, or something like that, your Facebook, your Instagram, uh, very, very deceitful. Uh, I remember I was talking to a brother the other day, and I found what he said was absolutely true. Uh, I got an iPad at home, and uh, I got my Bible at home, 
And if I get it, here's what he said. He said this. He said, if you grab that iPad first, you're never going to look at that Bible. Because you're going to get going on that iPad. You're going to go to YouTube, and it's, you're gonna, there's going to be stuff there that is going to get your interest, and you're just going to be gone. I found that to be very true. I thought, I thought he was wrong. I said, no way, man. I've been saved a long time. I read my Bible every day. And I, and I did it a couple times. I picked that thing up first. Big mistake. I'm a pastor. There's no way you're going to derail me from the Bible. But that thing did. That thing did. So if it's going to snare me, I'm sure it's going to snare you. So I would just say this. Do not. Do not let it interfere with your Bible. You know what that is? That's a weed. That, that's a weed. That's going to choke the Word of God. That's going to that's gonna strangle all efforts to try to get something from God's Word. And he's out, he's preaching, he's, t- he's covering his hand, he's telling all those people about the weeds and how they're going to choke you. And when the disciples came to him, they said, tell us what these parables mean, because they didn't understand it. And then he said that. He said, the weed is uh, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and they are going to lure you away from what God's trying to instruct you with. And how many times has it come time for church and some old weeds over there got you? I won't let you go. You got to pull them weeds. Amen. All right, uh, let's, let's just uh, stop. Well, no, we don't want to stop. We're going to finish it, verse 8. Uh, but other fell into good ground. Remember, the ground is your heart. And the good ground is a guy that uh, doesn't let distractions stop him, doesn't let hardships and persecutions stop him, doesn't let the cares of this world lure him away. He stays in. And, he, and, he, and, he's, and he's able to get all of what God said. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. And then he said this, and I love the way he talks. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. The rest of you ain't going to matter anyway. <laughs> but man, if you got ears, I hope you believe what I'm telling you. I hope it'll matter to you. I hope it'll help you out. I hope you'll be instructed by the word and God and give it your best attention that you got. Amen. Amen. And when distractions come, you just look straight forward, man. Just keep going. <laughs> Amen. Don't let nothing stop it. And when, and when the devil comes over and says, hey, man, look at this. Look at this nice little jewel over here. Say, oh, okay, I'll look at it later. Right now I'm going to church. <laughs> Amen? And just don't let nothing stop you from getting instruction and be ready for that kingdom, brother. It's coming. It's coming. We're all going to be a part of it. All right, let's all stand this morning and have the pianist come and play something. And as soon as we're done.